today we're going to be doing uh, more portrait photography. And those of you who have attended the webinars uh, since I took over the program a couple months ago um, probably know that we haven't seen too many of these webinar, you know, portrait style webinars. Um, and so I wanted to start exploring that. And so it's going to be a pretty straightforward webinar. I've got a folder here. I prepped five images that I'd like to go through with you guys. Um, the first one, let's just start. We'll take this image here. Uh, all the images will just go in into Photoshop and work with photo tools and uh, focal point. And the way that I, I'm not, you know, by trade a portrait photographer. I mean, I guess I'll shoot anything, but um, personally, uh, I'm more of a landscape and architecture photographer. I still definitely appreciate uh, portrait work and um, I like to work on them when I have the opportunity. So the first thing I want to do is bring up the uh, our on one panel here. Uh, I like to in every webinar show people where it is in case you miss it. Um, it's a convenient way to launch any of the apps from within Photoshop and to get to it just go to window extensions and select on one and you can bring up the panel here. You can also access the products by going to file automate and then you'll have the list of products over here. Now, when I work on a portrait image, I kind of I bring it into two primary categories or two steps. Um, the first step is to correct the image, and you know, no one wants to, especially a model. You don't want to have to say, "Yeah, I'm going to correct your image," meaning I'm going to you know fix your skin, say. But that's the way it is. Um, the key is to be able to do it uh, with subtlety um, and with taste. You don't want your image looking like it's a you know a plastic doll um, so once you get your corrections done um, then you can stylize your image and the point is to kind of get the image uh, to focus usually on the face and more specifically on the eyes you know all the life comes through the eyes which is why we love catch lights um, and boosting the contrast and the brightness of the eyes um, so the first thing that we're going to do is, well, let's go into photo tools and let's start working on correcting the image. And not much needs to be done, but, you know, it's good to kind of make sure that the image is clean to begin with. So for those of you that may not be familiar with photo tools, it's a library of over 300 effects. And the effects are broken down into categories that you see listed here. Um, and we have a convenient one here called Portrait Enhance. And in Portrait Enhance, we have uh, compile the list of effects that are probably most appropriate to our image. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to kind of uh, smooth skin. I kind of want to soften it a little bit and you can see if I go here to my magnifying glass I can kind of draw a box over the face. Uh, actually let me zoom out really quickly. Whoa, went too close. Sorry guys. I don't know why this is uh, appearing like this, but uh, let me go ahead and zoom out manually. Or we're just going to cancel out of Photo Tools. This is a secret trick and go back into it. If ever that happens, that's usually what I'll do is I'll just reset out of Photo Tools and start over. Um, but instead of that, I'm just going to kind of click once. I don't know why this box appears, but so be it. We'll work around it. So like I was saying, the first thing that I want to do is smooth the skin. And I'll, I'm going to use this effect here called Auto Skin Smoother. And you can see when you select it, you've got these three different swatches. And these are skin tone swatches. Uh, they're basically, when you select one, you'll get a preview of what the skin tone we think is most representative of uh, for your model. And so I'm going to select this middle one here and hit Add to Stack. And watch you can see that the skin gets smooth and at 0% using our fade slider none of that effect is applied and at 100% it goes into this kind of plastic look which we want to avoid so what I like to do just with my effects for my landscape and, port and architecture work I just like to increase it slowly and stop when I'm happy so the great thing about this uh, auto skin smoother because you've selected the skin tone, it's really only affecting the skin tone. It's not touching anything else, which is fantastic. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to, much against my own better guessing, yeah, I really want to show zoom in here, but I don't know why this image, the box is appearing. Maybe if I move it. 
There we go. Perfect. The, what I want to do now is I want to get rid of this hard line of the shadow. I don't want to get rid of the shadow because the shadow is realistic, but I want to kind of soften that edge. I also want to get rid of the dark areas under her eyes, and there's a little bit of just kind of like, it looks like dead skin on her nose. Not a big deal. We've got a really cool effect here called model skin. Now you'll notice that next to model skin, there's this little pen icon. And what that means is when I hit add to stack, when we just did the uh, auto skin smoother, it applied uh, to the image altogether. It just applied and we adjusted it. When you have a pen icon next to an effect, that means that when you hit add to stack, nothing happens until you draw it in. So now I'm free. I can adjust my opacity, or the strength rather, and I can draw only where I want the effect to apply. And so I'm just applying it to the shadow. I'm going to draw a strip down the nose and then under the eyes. And what that's doing is it's softening the skin just a little bit. So if you see here, if we toggle our preview and then turn it back on, it's just a nice subtle change. It's subtle but effective. We're not looking to really go crazy. The last thing that I want to do is pop the eyes a little bit. I, I was saying that all the life really comes through the eyes. And there are two good effects to do this. There's this magic eye fixer, which is what I use. Um, and then also under the basic brushes, there's a brush more dynamic range uh, brush that my colleague Dan prefers to use. Uh, it's really up to you. They, the brush more dynamic range adds a little bit more kind of texture to the eyes, but I, I personally like my eyes to be a little bit smoother. So if I go to the magic eye fixer, you'll notice that the pen is there. I'm going to hit add to stack, and that means that all I need to do is draw it. And this works really nicely on eyes and also on teeth. If you have a, like nice white teeth and you want to kind of make them shine, um, it works really well on those. When I draw the effect in on the eyes, I usually like to be zoomed in. But when I adjust the actual strength of it, I like to zoom out to full view. And you can see when it comes out, it's, the eyes almost look irradiated. You can see as we kind of go back and forth, it go, goes to those like crazy, you know, awful laser beam eyes. And so you don't want that much. You, you don't need that much. You know, something about 30% is really nice. And so again, if we toggle the preview, you can see our before and our after. It's just a nice, um, the, the, the image is coming along nicely uh, for the senior portrait. Now, speaking of senior portraits, uh, it's, be, you know, it's pretty trendy to stylize senior portraits um, to make them look, uh, one of the more popular styles I'm seeing is more of that retro kind of vintage look. And so I go, say, to uh, any one of these categories, but if I go to, say, film and darkroom, um, we look around and we have a vintage category here, or a vintage effect, rather, with three style options. And by selecting them, let me, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit for a second so you can see the, how the preview changes based on the option that you select. So let me bring this down. Now, let's say I select red-yellow and I hit Add to Stack. It'll apply, and it comes in at 100%, and you can toggle the strength of it. But let's say you know you didn't want red-yellow, you wanted maybe blue-yellow-white, you like the preview over here for that. You can remove the effect by hitting the minus key, or if you want to save a few steps, you can double click on this little icon here that looks like a contrast, and then you'll have this hot pop-up with the same three effects. So all I need to do now is select the blue-yellow light and hit apply, and it'll change it on the fly. And I actually like this look a little bit better. And again, I can adjust the strength so that I get it to where I'm happy, and I don't want to do, overdo it too, too much. All right, so now our image is coming along. You can see one more time, before and then after. I'm going to hit Apply now, and I'm going to let Photo Tools render the image. Once we've corrected the image and we've stylized it, I'm, I've been starting to use Focal Point more and more to, to use it very subtly to bring the, the focus exactly where I want it. It works really well in landscape, and as I've been practicing with these images, I found that it works really well with um, portraits. So what I want to do first is I'm going to duplicate my layer, and I can do that by grabbing my layer and dragging it on this icon next to the trash bar barrel. And that's where I'm going to launch uh, Focal Point from. Just double click on Focal Point, and it'll bring up the interface. 
Now I'm going to reset everything. You can reset focal point to the factory settings by going to edit and reset all. Um, and I like to do that with each image so that we kind of start with a baseline. Now there are two ways that you can apply a focal point. We're, we're going to use focal point two different ways with this image. The first is, where, is by using this round bug. And so you can see the bug is round, the body is round, you've, and you can adjust the size of the bug by tugging at these feet. And so I'm just going to place the um, bug, kind of shape it to her face and angle it such. So you can see, now this is not looking good right now. It's, it's way too artificial, and that's fine. I'm just, I just want to make sure that I kind of have the bug around where I want it. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my feathering. The feathering is the, the amount of transition from the in-focus area to the out-of-focus. So to illustrate, if I bring it to zero, you'll see there is no transition. You see this kind of hard line. What I want to do is the complete opposite. I want to bring it to 100% transition. So now you can see if we show this mask under the focus brush palette, if we show mask, you can see how soft the transition is. So let's bring it back. What I want to do now is this amount slider right here controls the actual amount of blur outside of the focus bug. And so I don't need a lot of it. I actually only want about maybe 4%, just a little bit. And so now we're starting to get somewhere. What I can do further is use this focus brush. It's this brush next to the bug at the bottom of focal point. I'm going to adjust the strength of it. And I can draw on the face. So I want the whole face in focus, because I can see that part of it's out of focus. And as I draw, it snaps everything I draw into focus. I even want to draw just up until the jawline. So now we're getting somewhere and you can see if we go to our show mask how we're affecting it. I can even just fill in over here if I've missed spots. What I can do further, because what I'm trying to do is draw attention to the eyes. That to me is the most important part and the overall face. She's got a very pretty face. Um, and I want to kind of, I don't want the uh, viewer to get distracted too much by this metal background. So what I can do is I can drop the brightness of the background and boost the contrast just a little bit. I actually want to brighten it just a little bit. It was a bit too much. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting the, the my eyes go straight to hers. Um, it's the brightest part of the image, and that's typically where um, your eyes will start is the brightest part. And that's kind of where that magic eye fixer came in. That's why you want to brighten the eyes a little bit. You can also adjust the optical quality, which will give a little bit more of a texture back in the out of focus area. And so that's one way. Basically, we've created focus on her face. But what if you want you know, her hair to be in focus? Um, you kind of want this whole overall area, basically the, the area of her bust, to be in focus. Well, let's reset everything. And this time, so we've got our round bug here. Let's change the shape of the bug to planar. You'll notice right away that the bug's body went from a circle to a square. And you can see that the shape of the bug is now kind of rectangular as a characteristic. So what I'm doing is similar to the um, round bug, I'm rotating and positioning it over our model. And then I can adjust the feathering so that I have a nice smooth transition. I can make it wider if I want more of the hair in focus. And then again, I can drop the amount. I don't find that I ever need too much blur. But in this case here, we had it about four last time. Ten is a little bit better. And we can see the mask kind of go straight. And we're still we still have the mask. I could have cleared the mask that I drew from the previous image, but I kept it because I know that I want her face sharp. But I can, you know, continue to edit here. I can, if I want the necklace in, to be focused, I can. I can just draw wherever I want focus along the hair. It gives you total control with this focus brush. And so I'm just going to draw right through here because I want the hair to have some sort of body to it. And you can see by showing our mask what we're doing. And we can fill any of this in. The show mask button reveals exactly what you're showing and what you're hiding. 
and anything that's white will be out of focus. Anything in black will be, you know, tack sharp or whatever the original focus is of your image. So now we've got the image, and again, I also I still like to adjust the brightness, and the brightness and contrast are basically following the edges of the mask. So here's our bug. When I adjust the brightness and the contrast, it's affecting primarily everything outside of the bug. So it kind of helps draw the eye to where you want it. Um, so that's kind of two quick ways you can see we can toggle the before and the after. It's not in your face in terms of, oh wow, that's, you know, this is, when I look at this image, I think, yeah, you know what, this could have been shot with uh, an 85 uh, millimeter lens at 1.2 aperture because the depth of field is so um, shallow. Um, and that's what that's how I use focal point. You can be as drastic as you want, but for me, I personally like to um, just have subtlety with focal point. So I'll hit cancel. Normally I would hit apply. Um, and I want to move on to my next image. I'm going to skip to, I want to do this one right here. So this image uh, was taken at Carnival by one of our uh, friends and fantastic photographer, um, Scott Stolberg. And I love this image, but it's um, it's just this too distracting. There's too much going on in the background. So what I want to do is um, I can use focal point to just draw the eyes to the character over here in the foreground. But first, let's pop the image just a bit. We can go into photo tools here and I don't even need to do that much because there's no skin. There's not much correcting that needs to be done. Um, what I can do, something I can use um, under the stylized effects. There's a turbo boost effect that I like to apply, and so I'm going to add it to stack, and it's just going to punch the image a little bit. And you can see at 100%, it's just way too much. It's just the shadows get really dark, but I just want a, a tiny bit of it. And then if I want, I can kind of warm up the image um, a tad using one of my favorite effects called Golden Hour Enhancer. I'll add it to the stack. And it just brings out a little bit of richness to the image. But I don't need that much. I just want a little bit, maybe about 40%. All right, so here's our before and here's our after. Nothing big. Um, what I want to do is hit Apply and let the uh, photo tools effects get rendered. And when I'm shooting, uh, especially if I'm shooting, say, uh, an image, if I was the photographer here, I would know um, that I, even though I have these distracting elements in the background, I can minimize how distracting they are using focal point. And so, again, let's go here into focal point, and let's kind of, we'll reset uh, all the settings. Let me just see if there are any um, questions here. Yeah, uh, there's a question as to whether you can brush in or out the different degrees of focus. Um, yeah, basically, so, and if I understand the question correctly, we have a, there's a brush opacity slider here. So at 50%, it's only going to, it's going to uh, brush in half of the focus each time you brush onto it. So if you just want to bring a tiny bit of focus, you can drop the opacity. Uh, I'm usually at 100% depending on what I'm painting in. So I hope that answers the question. Um, when There's a question as to how did, when I reset everything um, but kept the mask. Um, basically, when you reset your settings, it only resets the sliders. If I wanted to get rid of the mask, I would hit this reset mask button, and that would wipe the mask out. So you can do that as well. I wanted to keep it because I knew that I wanted the model's face uh, in uh, in focus. So again, what we're going to do is let's use the round bug, and this is really more of a, I would say uh, a case for the round bug. It's it's not often that I find cases uh, to use the round shape bug. It's mostly I'm dealing with planar, and I'm going to bring the feathering up. This is a really cool cool trick that I actually learned from the photographer, Scott Stolberg, who took this picture. He does this. He brings his uh, feathering up to 100%, and then he drops the amount, because we don't need that much. In fact, here, it could, we could probably stand to make it a little bit more blurry, about 10%. And 
now with the focus brush again so with the opacity if I had it at anything less than a hundred it would you know I would have to paint several times I'm just going to draw kind of outline the mask and the costume and you can even if you want just kind of paint in it almost gives it a uh, three-dimensional look um, like the like this little charm here is kind of hovering on top of the mask and it looks really nice um, and you can see we can turn the preview on and off and again you you have total control you could um if I wanted to I can paint blur so I can if I want to just paint more blur here and it'll blur it out even more but I don't want to do that you just have that um, the ability it's not just painting focus you can also actually paint in um, the blur in areas the next thing that I want to do is again brightness and contrast drop the brightness just a little bit and boost the contrast and then I noticed that when I brought this area out of focus it created all these little specular highlights these little explosions there are a few things I can do with this the first thing I can do is change the overall shape of them I can change the shape using the aperture drop-down so the way the the shape of you know bokeh works is um, it takes the shape of your aperture so your aperture is defined by how many blades you have as well as the quality of the blades um, I know people who buy certain vintage lenses specifically because of the um, shape and the quality of the bokeh that's created so uh, just goes to show you and we give you the ability to change this the shape of it so I can make it eight sides here and I can make it more round if I wanted to and you can see how the little areas are becoming rounder or I can draw it all the way in and now they become kind of little stars little pegs and so it's totally up to you how you um, how you want them to appear you can go funky and do three sides and turn them into these triangles if you want um, I like the more just a rounder kind of more classic look nice specular highlight but here's what's cool so we've created the shape of the highlight we can also boost them by using this highlight bloom and what it does is it just kind of gives it a nice pop to the image and so now this image is looking pretty freaking cool you know it's looking a lot better than what we started with this kind of this image looks very flat to me and your eyes don't know where to go because you've got everything going on here but now you kind of have an idea exactly where to go um, so there's a question really quickly do I use these products in my architecture photography um, I do and I actually uh, you can uh, go to any of the archived webinars that we have on the university to see how I use focal point but I'll be doing some specific landscape and architecture ones uh, down the line as well but I definitely use um, go to any of the HDR ones and there should be at least a few images where I use photo tools and focal point um, I use focal point on landscape photography again just like I'm doing here um, here I'm, I want to draw your eyes to this face um, in landscape photography I maybe want to draw your eyes down a certain path or to a specific area of the scene so that's um that's basically what how focal point fits into that kind of photography so let me um, let me move on I'm going to hit cancel here. Normally I hit apply again, but I'm finished with the image, so I'm just going to close out of it. Okay. Now let's go on to this image here. This is another just good example of um, how you can use photo tools to fix the image. Um, it's just a model shot, and we're going to go into photo tools now. The thing with portraits. Uh, as opposed to say if I were doing a um, an HDR webinar like I've been doing you know a landscape or urbex or architecture that you have more I would say more license in terms of the effects that you use with models um, you know you're pretty much doing relatively um, the same thing and especially in the corrective nature let's see if um, let's see if we get that okay good we didn't get that bar very cool so again what I want to do is kind of soften her skin so if I go to the portrait enhance and to the auto skin smoother I'll select the tone that 
best represents the model, and I'll hit Add. And I'll adjust it, and it does a really nice job. It kind of gives a nice soft look. What I can do is I can also I can use my brush here. In Focal Point, the brush uh, is used to paint focus in and out, and in Photo Tools, the brush is actually used as a masking brush. So if I want, when I select the uh, the masking brush, I have this option here to paint out, and I can just paint out of the eyes and anywhere that I don't want the softening to uh, appear. The next thing that I want to do is uh, pop the eyes, actually. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Magic Eye Fixer and just draw over the eyes. Now when it comes in, it comes in again pretty strong. I'm not, I don't need that strength. So if I bring it out, I can adjust it. You can see how it kind of goes from nothing to crazy. So I don't need that much. And you can see just the preview. You have to ask yourself um, what your what the intent of the image is. So if this was just a standard model shot, odds are you know you're you're going to be your processing style is just going to be to correct the image and then to apply some sort of a basic effect. And so here, let's say I wanted to convert this image to black and white. I can do that. You know, I've got various black and white images uh, or black and white effects under this black and white treatments category. Um, and as you hover over them you can decide which one works best for you. So here we can try, there's one here called Black and White GM Warm plus Warm 1 plus Snappy A1 and it's by Kevin Kubota who has a bunch of black and white effects here. And this is very much um, kind of like experimentation but I actually like the way this looks. It kind of gives it a, a newspaper feel to it. Um, the, here with Black and White the fade slider it depends on what you're trying to do. Here, if you drop it down to zero, none of the effect appears. And as you bring it up, you're almost getting this kind of kind of like a bleached bypass or desaturated look. Uh, and we have some effects that kind of replicate that. It almost is getting kind of tinny, which it, it looks kind of cool. But if you want the full effect, you know, just bring it to 100%. Um, there's a question here that uh, to see if we can do the other eye enhancer. Sure. Um, the so earlier I was saying how there's the magic eye fixer and then there's the brush more dynamic range. Let me remove this effect really quickly, and remove the magic eye fixer, and then let's zoom in on the face again. We'll go to the basic brushes, and we'll select the brush more dynamic range brush, and paint onto the eyes. And so again, what it does is it kind of has the same effect, but if you look really closely uh, on my display, because it's not being compressed over GoToMeeting, I can see that it brings a little bit of texture to the eyes. So if I go back to uh, full screen view, I can adjust the strength of it. It doesn't brighten it as much, but it adds more texture. Actually, it might be better if I zoom in again so you can see the difference. And there's my box. Let me try one more time. There we go. Um, so we can see the strength here. How it's it's a different characteristic. Actually, let's do this. Let's go to um, Portrait Enhance and go to Magic Eye Fixer. And what we'll do is we'll add both of them and we'll just turn one off and the other one on. So let's turn Brush More Dynamic Range off. So now this is these are the eyes with nothing. So here's the uh, Magic Eye Fixer, and you can see, let's just go at 100%. So that's what it does. Now let's go to the basic brushes and go to the more dynamic range. And what I'm going to do is uh, turn off this effect, go to the brush more dynamic range, and just brush onto the eyes. So here is at 100% you can see the difference. So let's turn Brush More Dynamic Range off and Magic Eye Fixer on. It adds more texture to the uh, darker parts of the eyes. It uh, makes the eyes uh, a little bit, uh, the, especially the black areas, more defined. So there we go. But yeah, so that, that's the difference between the two effects. I personally like the Magic Eye Fixer better 
Um, I don't I know, don't care too much for the brush more dynamic range. Um, we built that in there not so much for eyes, but more for um, as a texture brush for HDR images. Um, I per personally I don't like it. I never did. Um, I don't think it does a good job of adding texture. Um, but you know your mileage may vary, so use it as you see fit. All right, so we've got the image here. Let me just remove this effect. I don't need it. Um, and then what I was doing before was I added that, that black and white effect. So let me go to the black and white treatments and add it back. And so we can go and hit apply and let uh, Photo Tools do its thing. And what we can do is bring into focal point if we want to, again, bring focus to the, the face and the eyes. And so once it's done, we've got the image here on its own layer. I'm going to duplicate it and go into focal point. And so you can start seeing kind of a pattern of how these applications work hand in hand. I'm going to reset everything, bring the mask over her face, just kind of shape it. And again, feathering to 100, amount down to, let's see what 8 is, a bit too much. 6, still too much. Let's go down to 3. That's a little bit better. Um, it's kind of, it, it depends on what you're going for. Like I said, we can ensure that the face is tack sharp by painting focus in. And that'll snap some of it back in. You can even get the kind of lower rim of her hat if you want. But just be careful because this becomes, um, you almost defeat the purpose as you start painting more and more. It's almost like you're just painting everything back into focus. So be careful, be cognizant. Uh, if you want, you can kind of get the hair in. And so now it kind of looks like the hair is, it, it, ha it definitely takes on a three-dimensional look. Um, it, the hair looks like it's almost popping off a little bit and you can get really fine with it by adjusting the brush size and getting kind of to the tips of the hair. And again, we can drop the brightness and boost the contrast. Focal point is kind of like that. It, it becomes um, somewhat serial in nature where you're kind of doing the same thing um, somewhat over. You're repeating certain steps over and over because the effect uh, gets magnified more. So you can see we've gone from this, which is kind of a, it's a good image, but it's kind of flat um, to this, which has a lot more character to it. Uh, there's a good question here about whether you can set Photoshop actions with the On1 plugins. Uh, yeah, and I'm actually going to be recording a sm short video on how to, so you can kind of script certain things with photo. If there are certain effects that you always want to use in Photo Tools, um, you can record those effects as an action and just kind of play them over and over, uh, so you can batch process. So I'm going to, and actually, see, I don't like. There's, I, I'm going to have to correct this area here or around her um, her hair because I masked it out. And so I would do that later on. I don't want to waste the time right now. But um, you want to make sure that if you do kind of play with those kinds of uh, masking brushes that you look around and you don't send an image with that clear discrepancy on the skin. So let's bring this image here right now into Photoshop. This is kind of a, um, just a nice wedding image. And it's, a, it's very dark. So I don't want to do too much in terms of stylization. I don't want to lose the bride. Um, so let me go into Photo Tools. What I want to do is it's a bit too sharp for me. And I know that I want to um, just kind of give it a little bit of uh, a glow. And I want a black and white. The color to me is too distracting. So if I go to the black and white treatments here, there's a great uh, effect here this black and white tasty glow. It does a really nice job of kind of converting the image to black and white and giving it a nice soft glow to it. And so again, you can control the effect of it or the uh, strength of it by adjusting the slider, but I don't see a point with black and white uh, to do that. 
personally, I, I if you're going to do black and white, you convert to black and white. So there's not much else that I, I, I really want to do. Um, I could, if I want, go to the lighting effects here, go to this dynamic light, and then add it to the stack. And what that'll do is it'll give me a bug similar to focal point. And so if I just want to localize some brightness to the um, to the dress because it was a bit dark, I can do that. I can adjust the amount, but you could see how adjusting the strength adjusts how much brightness there is. So I'm just looking at the dress here. And then I can paint out wherever I don't want the effect. I can uh, restore like the carpet. I don't want the this carpet here to be brighter than it is. So I can just paint it out. And so using this masking brush, you get total control of where the effect is applied. And even though I masked it out, I can still adjust the dress. So it's a cool little trick if you want to um, if you want to kind of uh, boost uh, dodge and burn specifically because you can uh, lighten or darken with these sub options over here. So let hit, let's hit apply. And again, it was quick, pretty painless in terms of the effects. A lot uh, simpler than what I would do if it was a landscape or an architecture shot, um, especially if it was just a personal fine art shot. So we've got the image here. It's got a nice kind of soft look to it, and we can kind of duplicate it. I like to work on separate layers when I uh, work with um, separate applications within Photoshop. There was a question earlier I saw on how I got this palette, so I'll just repeat that really quickly. To get to the palette in Photoshop, uh, you need to have the application, applications installed first. Then you go to Window, Extensions, and then there's this on one line over here that'll pop the uh, palette up. So we can go into focal or yeah, focal point now. And let me just reset everything. Uh, so here again, um, this is one where I'm finding more with portraits, round works better. Or I shouldn't say better, but I'm finding more cases to use round than um, than anything else. And so I can boost my, and it, this is very much experimentation. There is no right or wrong. I'm not, you can choose to do a planer and, you know, put it over the bride, or you can choose not to do anything at all. What I wanted to kind of, the reason why I wanted to do this webinar is because um, I want to show that the, so these applications certainly do have, um, they're kind of, they can be commingled together. So we're going to drop the, brightness, or not the brightness, the actual amount of the blur down. We don't need that much. Um, and then I'm going to start painting. And again, I, the painting is where I find when you start painting focus back in, that's where you get the 3D effect. The, bride, the bride's dress looks like, it's, looks like it's hovering on the carpet. And depending on the style of a photographer that you are, um, this might be something that is very cool, or it could be something that doesn't you know, fit your bill, which is fine. Uh, I actually have a, a good friend who's a fantastic wedding photographer, and he does, I mean, he has a, a core set of processing styles that he kind of uses. He does not deviate. He doesn't want his images looking like uh, 10 different photographers shot and process them, and I can respect that to a degree, um, but for me, I personally like giving the images somewhat of a unique uh, look and a unique feel. Um, because it defines my it defines me as a photographer, um, so you can see now uh, the image is is taking on that nice three D effect, especially as you paint along the edges of the dress and of the bride's face and body. She's kind of looking. You can see if we deselect the preview, flat, and now this has a nice kind of you know a very tasteful blur to it. Dropping the brightness, you want to be careful in this kind of image because you've already got such uh, kind of dark shadows around. You don't want to be uh, too aggressive with that. You can, in fact, probably brighten it a little bit if you wanted to add to the uh, to the glow of the image, kind of give it a more angelic feel. Um, and then that's really all I would do. I would, if I boosted the highlight bloom, it might get a little too bright. You, you know, you've already kind of blown out the windows, which is fine. Um, but I might not do that so much. And then again, when I'm done, I would hit apply.
but I'm going to hit cancel because we don't need to render the changes in focal point. So let's go on to this last image here. So this last image here, um, I actually took, um, it's, it was just an engagement shoot for two friends. Uh, I want, they, were, they were really cool. They wanted to have some fun. And so I saw a picture similar to this in a magazine a few days before, so I, I wanted to give it a shot. Um, the wind was, was just about right. Like I actually like the way her hair kind of frames her eye. And uh, you, I'm not going to pretend, like I said, to be some big know-it-all portrait photographer, but for me as a photographer, the uh, or the um, fiance's uh, the scar over here in the back of his head is distracting to me. I, th I would say, and you know, take it as you will. I I went and I asked, hey, do you want me to remove this? Instead of just assuming and removing it, I asked first, and I'm glad that I did because they said, no, absolutely not. This is kind of like his one of his defining uh, features, I guess. So I kept it in there, and it was a lesson actually reaffirmed to me by doing that, because you can easily just take this um, healing brush here, just draw on it, and instantly the, the guy never had his head cut and had to be um, stitched. But he wants it, so we keep it in. And so right now, again, what I want to do is um, let me go into photo tools and we're gonna have some fun with the image. I, this image when I presented it to them I gave it to them as a black and white and so that's the first thing that I wanted to do was convert it to black and white. Um, I just find it looks really good and so in Photo Tools 2.6 we added a new black and white effect called Mac GBW and it's got these neutral warm and cool and so you can add it to the stack to change the overall look um, and neutral is pre pretty cool. Um, I didn't, again, I don't really adjust strength for black and white. I just kind of go full on with it. Uh, the next thing that I would do is, again, the pop the eyes, because the eyes, I mean, she has beautiful eyes. So let's go to the portrait in hands. And again, I like Magic Eye Fixer. And so I'll paint it in. Let me drop the size of the brush. And you can see it does a nice job. You know, you can get away with a lot more strength normally uh, than you normally would. And then, if you want, the last thing that you can do is again go to the lighting effects, go to dynamic light, and just add in a masking bug. And so here, I mean, it's way too much. I'm not worried about that. I'll adjust the strength of it, um, and just drop the strength just to boost it a little bit. And when I get it to a place that I'm happy, I can. what I can do is I can just brush everything out except for her face. Again, drawing focus, dr brush out her eyes, brush out the background that got affected by the plugin, or by the effect rather. And now I can just adjust the brightness of her. You can see where the effect is being applied. So um, what we can do is show the mask and just paint everything out that's black and just leave that area here which is clearly her face uh, we can leave that so that when we adjust the strength of the effect it's only going to apply to the face so let's hide this mask and let's see what we get get to a point where we're happy we still have a little bit of his the back of his head but it kind of the, the face pops now and if you Let's say um, now if the eye is too bright, you can go back to the magic eye fixer, adjust the strength of it, because now we're compensating with the dynamic light effect, and it's not going to be as um, obvious. So we've got the image here, um, and we can hit apply to render the effect. So while that's rendering, let me see if there are any uh, questions. For these, the question here is if I'm working in, in raw or raw or JPEG. Um, just for the purposes of the webinar, um, they're a combination of either PSD files or JPEGs just to speed things up. But when I was out shooting with them, I was shooting in raw. Whenever I shoot, I shoot in raw. Uh, it's just kind of, I'd rather have the uncompressed file than compress. I'm not an avid you know, sports photographer um, where I need to have high burst modes. Um, that to me is not as important. So again, 
it depends on what you um, what you want to do, you know, what kind of photography you're into. Now, one thing we can do here is, and I do this a lot too, um, under the adjustments panel in Photoshop. So if you go to Window and then Adjustments, uh, you, I think I I, I want to say it was uh, Photoshop CS4. It might have been CS3 where adjustment layers were introduced, and they're fantastic. You've got all these effect or these uh, settings here for your image. And if you click on any one of them, it um, brings up an adjustment layer, which you can adjust on the fly. And so this is to adjust my white points and my black point. So here you can, sometimes what I like to do is bring my white point and my black point in just a tiny bit. And then the middle slider will adjust kind of the midtone area. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a refinery. So you can see this is without the adjustment, and this is with the adjustment. It kind of adds a little bit of pop. Um, and I usually will do this to a lot of my images, um, just a little bit. You don't need to do a lot. And this is this will go for portraits and for uh, for um, architecture and landscape. Now what I can do is um, let me actually just duplicate this layer. Let's go into focal point. And so here, it's it's this is also very much a toss-up. Um, what I'm thinking of doing here is, let me reset this. I might put a circular mask over her face. And again, this is going to get kind of funky. Um, I'm not sure how this will turn out, but it could be kind of cool. Put the circular mask over her face, and let's see. Let's bring feathering up. Drop the blur, and then paint in just the face. But what I'm the problem is that I already foresee is I want his head to be totally out of focus. And so what we can do is um, once I just want to paint the hairline, okay, and then the chin. We can drop the opacity of our focus brush and change from paint focus to paint blur. Uh, let's drop it even more and then just kind of draw over this guy's head until we kind of get the blur amount to match. And so now we're getting there. And so what we're getting is um, just her face and her eyes, or her eye rather, uh, is in focus. Uh, there's a question here as to what uh, camera I use. I shoot. I have two cameras. I have a Canon 5D Mark II. This was with the 24 to 70, I believe, uh, lens. Um, I also have a Canon 40D that I converted to infrared, but that I haven't really. Sh infrared is very, very cool to shoot with people. Uh, that turns the uh, people's skin like snow white. It's it's pretty cool. I haven't really done much with it. Um, mostly because my wife hates it when I try to shoot her with the IR camera. Um, and then there's another question in terms of controlling the brush size. Yep, you can control the brush size the same as you would in Photoshop using the left and right brackets. Um, or if you have a, I have a Wacom uh, Intuos 4 um, tablet, and on the Wacom Intuos 4 there is a touch ring. It's And so you can you can configure it to kind of loop your finger in a circle so if you loop to the right the brush gets larger and if you loop to the left it gets smaller but it's it's totally up to you um, I, I love my um, I love 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 my Intuos I cannot recommend them enough um, and here's a good question with a low brush opacity um, does the opacity increase each time yeah so that's what what I was doing is I was drawing over a few times um, and that's a good way at a lower opacity. It works the same way with Photoshop in general. Um, if you have a layer mask and you are painting in uh, black, but you drop the opacity of your brush to you know 10%, uh, that just means that you're only br you're brushing through a 10% of the original strength. So um, there's a question here in terms of how to get to the archive webinars. I'll cover that uh, before I finish for sure. Um, but you can just go to ononesoftware.com forward slash university. Um, 
there's a comment that the, the camera doesn't matter to the photographer uh, is the main difference. Absolutely, that's true. But um, you know, having having 21 megapixels at my disposal, uh, I won't complain at that when I want to blow up my image to a poster size, which I've done. Um, and it's also about having the right gear for the right shot. Um, so it's kind of it's a it's a funny debate as to whether gear how important gear is. Um, I'd say it's um, it's a, definitely a topic to have over a beer. I'd say so. Uh, with that, let's um, you know let's see the before and after really quickly. So that's the before, and here's the after. Uh, it's kind of cool. Um, I'd, I'd probably play around with this. Uh, I might do a planar one, see what a, what we can do with getting both of their faces in focus. But that's kind of where all the experimentation comes. Let me see if I drop the brightness and I boost the contrast. I would also probably um, brighten her face overall a little bit. It's, it's a bit too dark for me, so I would do that in Photoshop, just affect her face. Um, so that's that. Um, those are the examples that I have. Let me just go through and see if there are any questions before I uh, resume my uh, little keynote presentation. Uh, okay, so here's a. This is a good one. Let me see if um, there's a. The question is: In a previous webinar, I showed how I used a selection to protect a certain part of the image when I went to focal point. So let's do this. Oops, come back, Photoshop. Let me close this image here, and we'll go back to the carnival scene, uh, which was this one. No, it was the fifth one. So let's just say, and I, let's, I don't know how well it'll work here, but let's just say I want to protect this part of the image. I can use a quick select brush and just select the face and maybe this part of the head. Again, this is just kind of quick and dirty. Now let me get the eyes. Now if I invert the selection, and then go into focal point with that selection made, I th what should happen is the face is, oh, the, the selection that we made is protected. So we can do a blur amount, a crazy blur amount, but the selection is retained. So if there's a particular part of your image, this is actually a very good question, thank you for that. Um, if there's a particular part of your image that you know you do not want to um, affect, then uh, I recommend making a selection first. Um, so I hope that helps. Anything, but remember, it's what you have selected that um, will be that focal point will work on. So again, I selected the face and I inverted it. So basically, everything but the face was was uh, being selected and worked on. So that is. Um, that is that's kind of how I would use selections. Um, okay, yeah, and thank you, uh, Bill. The adjustment layers were there in CS3, and but that panel was new. Um, I think with CS4, this panel right here. Um, it just makes it easier to access any one of the various settings. I, if you don't uh, know how to use adjustment layers, I strongly recommend just reading up some tutorials. It makes a world of a difference. Um, in terms of the ease and, and the that you can always go on the fly and change any of the settings. So that is it for now.